Wars can shift alliances. They can put enemies in the same room or pit friends against each other. Just look at West Asia. Two sown regional rivals are looking to cooperate. We're talking about Iran and Saudi Arabia. Reports say Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi will travel to Riyadh. It will be his first trip to Saudi Arabia. Also the first by an Iranian president in almost a decade. In Riyadh, Raisi will attend the OIC summit. The OIC is the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. It's a group of 57 Muslim countries. They're holding an emergency summit on Sunday and Raisi plans to attend. Now, why is this important? Like I mentioned, Israel, Iran and Saudi Arabia are rivals. Saudi Arabia is a Sunni kingdom. Iran is a Shiite republic. They represent two major sects of Islam, Shia and Sunni. In 2016, they broke, they broke off diplomatic ties. The Saudi embassy in Tehran was attacked. So Riyadh said, no more relations. But earlier this year, that changed. China brokered a deal between Saudi Arabia and Iran. Both sides agreed to normalize relations. So this visit is the culmination of that effort. But the circumstances, not so good. Raisi would have preferred a better backdrop, certainly not a war in West Asia, but this is what he's got, a crisis visit. Perhaps a separate meeting with Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman too. They have spoken on the phone. On the 12th of October, both leaders had a conversation, the Iranian and the Saudi leaders. It was the first one between them, and they agreed that the attacks on Palestinians must end. They also mentioned the Americans. Both MBS and Raisi said the U.S. green signal for Israel was dangerous. So common ground there. First, for Palestine. Second, for criticizing the United States of America. But beyond that, what's in it for both sides? Well, Iran's strategy is quite clear. The Saudis were trying to strike a deal with Israel. Iran wanted to stop them. And from the looks of it, it's mission accomplished. Saudi Arabia has put the Israel deal on ice. Also, Tehran needs money. Sanctions have crippled the Iranian economy, so Saudi investments would help. In fact, Riyadh's finance minister confirmed this. He said investments into Iran could happen, quote unquote, very quickly. So it's win-win for Iran. What about Saudi Arabia? Their biggest concern is security, both national and regional. The Houthis in Yemen have tried to target Saudi assets, sometimes with success. And who supports the Houthis? Iran does. They're seen as Iranian proxies. So MBS will be hoping that Raisi can put a leash on them. Same with regional security. Iran's proxies can decide where this war goes, whether it's an escalation or not. And a wider war hurts the crown prince's plan because he has big dreams for the kingdom. He wants an oil-free economy based on new industries like tourism and technology. You can't have that in the middle of a war. We've already seen indications of that. Last month, Riyadh hosted a major investment forum. It's called Davos in the Desert. Many participants ended up cancelling. Plus, the overall mood was rather grim. So MBS wants to change all of that. He needs Iran to ensure that the region is stable, if not peaceful. Which brings us to the United States. West Asian stability was supposed to be their job. Let me take you back in history. After the 1960s, the U.S. had a special policy in West Asia, the Twin Pillar Policy. And these two pillars were Iran and Saudi Arabia. The U.S. gave them money and weapons. In return, they protected American interests in the region. All that changed in 1979 after the revolution. Iran became America's enemy. So just one pillar was left, Saudi Arabia. That's when U.S. policy entered another stage that of a guarantor. Saudi Arabia faced challenges and threats from Tehran, so the US protected them. And even today, it's the same relationship. In fact, Riyadh wanted to expand that guarantee. They asked for a NATO-like treaty with Washington. It was one of their conditions for normalizing ties with Israel. But now all of that goes out of the window. West Asia seems to have lost trust in the US. And you can't blame them. Just look at America's struggle in Gaza. Biden is working overtime to get a humanitarian pause. He sent his Secretary of State. 
He sent his Pentagon chief. He flew down himself. And finally, he sent the Secretary of State again. Only then did Israel talk about a pause. It tells you that the clout has diminished. And West Asian countries realize this. They cannot depend on the U.S. to guarantee their security or to contain wars and conflicts. They have to do that themselves. Recent decisions reflect that realization, like letting Syria back into the Arab League or Raisi visiting Riyadh. So the end of this war could force new West Asian equations. Yes, the U.S. and Israel may come closer than before, but the U.S. and the Arab world, well, that's a relationship in jeopardy.